So, my name is Sherman Webb Middlebrooks. I'm a lifelong Buffalo resident, full-time black man. So my involvement in 4-H really has been um, kind of like an, an adult um, assistant, um, a, an adult volunteer, um, but I also have provided some technical assistance um, as far as program development um, and also helped a lot with like media production um, for 4-H as well. Um, I really um, had the honor just to serve as like a 4-H adult volunteer, really just um, being a chaperone for young people on field trips and also being just a sounding board um, for some of the young people in the program um, and, and serving as a mentor. So I was, um, I've been involved with a, with a lot of 4-H programming. Um, most notably, 4-H um, Youth Camp, which is the Youth Community Action um, Network. So just working with this group of young leaders in our city of Buffalo um, and really seeking to like foster and support them. Um, and again, like I said, being their sounding board, being somebody who has their back just as an adult in the community. Um, yeah, so being a part of 4-H um, Youth Camp, um, helping uh, go out to Syracuse during the, uh, seeing the county fair, seeing um, all the different 4-H programs um, that are present in the state. Um, this was primarily with the young people I had the pleasure of working with um, over at Tapestry um, Charter High School. I think it was like 2017 or 2018 um, was when I officially got started um, working with that, that group of young people. So many of them are um, off in college now, um, doing amazing things um, as young adults. So um, it definitely was a, a privilege to be uh, a part of 4-H as an adult volunteer. My participation in 4-H, what is it, 2022? So it's been about five years, I would say. Um, going on about five years. Um, five wonderful years. I mean, they've, they've blown by just the amount of opportunities I've had just to see young people grow and develop. Um, and for me, quite honestly, this is something that I wish that I had when I was a, a young person in high school or even in grammar school or even in my earlier years in college, I would have loved to have been exposed to a program like 4-H just because it provides um, not only leadership development, but it also connects you to like caring adults in the community um, who can help you um, when, when times are rough and can really help fill in gaps that maybe your friends and your family can't. So just being connected to caring adults in the community too um, over these past five years um, and being able to be a caring adult as well for some of the young people in the city too uh, over the past five years has been something that I truly um, consider to be an honor. So I would say my main reason for being involved with 4-H, um, it stemmed from having a conversation, um, in all honesty, having a conversation um, with Sarah, who's become um, just one of my favorite people to collaborate with. So Sarah Jablonski, um, we had a meeting she um, was familiar with my mentor, Tracy McGee. Um, and so just by way of her knowing him, um, that sparked the conversation. We had, we had lunch, um, we met up and talked, and I just asked her like um, about the program, and she shared that she had young people who were coming and were involved, but she had a difficult time um, retaining the young black males in the program. And I quite honestly just asked her, did she have any black males helping her with the program? And she said that she didn't. And then she asked, would I be interested? And I was interested. I mean, that was the whole reason why I asked the question. Um, and so that was pretty much why, just to um, really be present um, and be visible um, as a black male in the community, because I understood the value of the resources and the opportunities that were being present. And if me showing up would allow another young black man in the community to get this good information, to get this exposure, to make these connections, and all I had to do was show up and be present for them to feel comfortable enough to feel like they belong there, then I was gonna show up and make myself available to these young brothers in the community so that way they felt you know, seen and heard and represented um, by an adult in a leadership role. Oh man, so, <laughs> so the best thing I would say about being in 4-H, now mind you, like I've, um, so I, I didn't participate as a young person, only as an adult, um, but just those, those star trips and going out there um, with, my, with my teens, man, and like us representing for Erie County and Buffalo and, and Western New York and being like the only group of black people out there and really just putting on, um, 
I think that was like my favorite part because it like it made us closer. Um, I could see that like we us as a group we got closer because we recognized like what we were doing was special and we stuck together while we were out there. Um, and then just also just being out of like the school element, being out of the city um, and just seeing young people have fun and then making um, those Burger King and Chick-fil-A trips for y'all because the food wasn't that good. <laughs> um, and then getting in trouble because uh, some of the other clubs was mad that I was going <laughs> off campus and bringing back fast food for our kids. So that was one of my uh, fondest memories, but just, you know, being out there um, and it being a new experience for me too and just encouraging the young people to go with it. But also, um, <laughs> The, so going out there and, and being cold and not taking enough blankets the first year, um, I'm like, oh, it's, it's freezing cold. Uh, but then the next year, like I was ready. I had like all kinds of extra blankets I was set up. So just, just being present and just taking um, the whole experience as it came to me was fun. Wow, so I definitely think just overall, um, my skills as a youth development professional um, grew because I, I had a chance to be exposed to not only different types of young people who had different interests um, in my community, um, but also going out and being that star and then seeing uh, the other young people from rural communities and their interests and just, I'm a firm believer that exposure leads to expansion and it leads to empathy. So um, just being exposed to the different cultures and the different programs throughout the state um, gave me a bit more empathy and understanding for like cultures that's different than ours in the city. Um, and just really just deepened my sense of like everybody, especially young people are going through something and it's important as an adult to show up and be supportive and provide guidance um, and provide a safe place for them to land um, and provide opportunity for them to have um, just conversations and have their voice be heard. So for me, that was the best part, um, just being exposed to different types of young people um, throughout the state of New York. Um, and, and yeah, and then watching my young people from the city, um, my kids grow into like leadership roles um, and watching them facilitate activities for their peers. Um, I'm, I'm just, I just really truly enjoy um, being a fly on the wall and watching the growth and development of, of young people who I may have like a little bit um, to do with um, just investing into their growth and development. Wow, so definitely more visibility um, as far as 4-H, I think 4-H absolutely needs um, more funding, which um, comes with more visibility. I think um, it should, there should be more Sarahs. Um, Sarah should have a team of people um, who's ever working in, in that role, should have a team of other folks who can have different sites at various schools or community organizations throughout the city. Um, instead of expecting it to all be on one person, um, kind of like in Western New York, because I mean, it is a lot um, for Sarah, and she does a tremendous job of creating partnerships and creating programs, um, but it's a lot for one person to do. So I think um, just getting her a team um, of, of supportive people from the community um, is first and foremost, and then I think partnering again with which is what um, Sarah and myself um, are trying to currently do partner with um, already standing community organizations like Say Yes um, and, and their Breaking Barriers program just to create more eyes on 4-H but also to supplement programs that are already um, taking place so I think it's about how it's marketed so I think a lot of times um, community organizations in cities are like feel like they're fighting for funding um, and so what the approach that we're trying to do is like, we're not trying to take your kids, we're just trying to support and uplift whatever you already doing, take it, enhance it, and make it better. Um, and so I think 4-H could definitely fill a lot of gaps in our city as far as supplementing some of the already existing programming that's taking place. They just need more funding um, to have um, increased capacity because it's a lot for one person to do. So I guess that's like a really interesting um, thing for me because my only exposure to 4-H has been working with a group of all black kids and one like non-black leader, um, team leader. So 
my my experience and exposure to 4-H has been uh, very much diverse. Um, it's been nothing but black kids that I've worked with doing 4-H. Um, and so for me, <laughs> I think there are other cities, there are other counties with large um, pockets of, of black and Latino kids. I'm thinking um, Syracuse, Rochester, Niagara Falls. Um, and so I'm wondering when we go out to Star, why they don't have um, a, a large urban population of, of students participating in 4-H. So I think um, just up and throughout the whole 90, so from Buffalo, Niagara Falls, Rochester, Syracuse, um, Albany and everywhere in between, um, really focusing on um, getting urban youth involved and starting at, if like, at like their high school, starting at the community centers, starting in junior high, um, offering it um, potentially as an elective in high school, offering it in conjunction with participation in government classes, um, partnering with summer youth program opportunities to get young people um, exposure but also paid. So, so many young, so young black and brown kids, um, once they reach that age of like 14, 15, 16, um, they're either expected to contribute to the family household or um, they're looking to contribute um, funds for themselves and support themselves um, just because money is tight for everybody. Um, and so I think if you're having a young person choose between basketball, football, and a part-time job in 4-H, um, if they don't truly understand how 4-H is gonna set them up in the future in terms of setting them up with relationships and opportunities to really learn who they are and what they like to do, then they're gonna pick basketball, football, baseball, track, and a part-time job at the mall or at a, a restaurant or something like that. So I think having people such as myself and, and more adults in the community who are able to be compensated for their time um, to go out and really champion this program um, and also even potentially um, recruiting and encouraging and maybe finding ways to like pay parents a stipend um, to, to engage in 4-H with their kids, with their teenagers. Um, and just opening it up to like the family in general, I think. But totally just marketing, just market it in, in the communities where we at. Um, put the flyers at the corner stores, advertise on the radio, advertise at the football games, um, go to where our young people are at. And then also thinking to um, social media, so increasing the social media presence um, and then increasing exposure to what we are actually doing. So making sure that the cameras are rolling, um, people taking pictures um, and posting so that way folks can see us having a good time. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, so much of like what we, what we do, I think it's like infotainment. So like, um, I'm, be, I'm becoming informed, but I'm also entertained and I'm engaged and I'm having a good time as I'm learning. Um, and so I think like young people, especially young people of color, just like all young people though, are looking to just have some fun, go somewhere where they feel safe, where they feel heard, and go somewhere where they feel like they're setting themselves up for their future to be able to go to school or get a job, something like that down the line. So just marketing for H like that, I think is the key. Um, outside of the fact that I just think 4-H is an underutilized resource um, in our community, um, I think Again, a lot of times some of the stuff that goes on in 4-H with regards to agriculture and horticulture, um, quite honestly, you might hear um, young kids, young black and brown kids say, oh, that's white people stuff. That's what white kids do, ain't doing that white stuff. But like, it's only white people stuff because you don't see black people doing it. But once you see black people doing it, then it becomes a black thing. And just understanding that like no matter what black people do in America, we make it cool, we make it fly, we make it the thing to do. Um, and so once we get more young black and brown kids involved with 4-H, um, the popularity of the program will just grow in itself because everything that black Americans do in our culture is, is cool. Um, we define cool. So I just want to um, encourage young people to step outside their comfort zone, step outside their boundaries, open up their playbook, and try something different. Um, and, and get 4-H to try, man. You got folks like me, you got folks like Sarah, folks like um, my man Tyler who's doing the interview, and other uh, alumni as well. So 
Um, yeah, give us a shot, man. We're going to continue to be here. We're going to continue to keep these opportunities um, open and available to y'all as well. So tap in with us. <laughs> you said what? Guess who edited the videos? <laughs> I'm the one who edited the video. <laughs> so I'm not going to cancel me. <laughs> that, you feel me? <laughs> Do you have any questions for me? Um, if not, then you know the interview over. Yeah, I'm about to say, uh, I already interviewed you. <laughs> but like these same questions. Um, but yeah, just do you have anything that you want to add um, in terms of, of 4-H or what do you think 4-H um, can do to support you as um, a, a college student, as a college freshman, college sophomore, early college student? What do you think 4-H could do to support you? Um, I say like, even just having like some person just come to the campus and like, I don't want to say like every week, but like, you know, every once in a while just come and just stop and like, and just talk to us and like maybe provide, I don't know, just something like, you know, advice, you know, something, you know, fun and engaging and like, yeah. just keep our, like take our minds off, you know, for a minute. And then we got like, you know, conversations about like, you know, Memories. So like, if like, say, if a Sarah came to my college, I would be happy because like, you know, I could just take a break. 